As we said in a previous video, special forces is an umbrella term for distinct and specially selected, trained and equipped military units that employ unconventional tactics. In that video, we covered the German Brandenburgers and SS Jager Battalion 502, the British Commandos and SAS, and the US Marine Raiders and 1st Special Service Force. But what about World War II's smaller belligerent nations? Do they field special units too? Absolutely, they did. And the men from these units were some of the toughest in the world. In this video, we share their stories. If you want to take a break from the infantry side of things, be sure to hop on War Thunder, the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. Play on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, or the previous console generation to experience thrilling and immersive PvP in the 2000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships War Thunder offers. Their collection of vehicles spends over 100 years of development, and an in-depth customization tool allows you to apply hundreds of camouflages, historical markings, and 3D decorators such as bushes. For the realists out there, War Thunder offers incredible graphics in 4K resolution, while also ensuring that each hit accurately damages your or your enemy's vehicle. As someone who loves playing War Thunder on the PS5, this is one of my favorite things, being able to see exactly which component was damaged or which crew member was actually hurt. Be sure to head to the link in my description and take advantage of the huge free bonus pack War Thunder is offering, including multiple premium vehicles, premium account features, boosters, and much more. Prior to the Soviet Union's invasion of Finland in November 1939, the Soviets believed Finland would be a walk in the park. Reflecting on the Soviet perspective during the war, military leader Nikita Khrushchev said, all we had to do was raise our voices a little bit and the Finns would obey. If that didn't work, we could fire one shot and the Finns would put up their hands and surrender. As Khrushchev came to learn, this was far from the truth. The Finns made the Soviets pay a heavy toll for every inch of ground during the Winter War. And among the Finnish forces that exacted these tolls were the ad hoc units known as the CC units. While CC translates roughly to guerrilla, these units were actually composed of army reservists and trained by the Finnish army. Due to limited supplies and the nature of the war that these men waged, they carried only light infantry weapons and a variety of mines, including the TM-65 track mine. They also made good use of skis. CC units fought the Soviets in Finland's vast swamps and forests, employing hit and run tactics and taking advantage of their high maneuverability to isolate groups of enemy troops. The pockets they created as a result of such tactics were known as MOTI. After the Winter War, when fighting between the Finns and Soviets resumed in the Continuation War, the ad hoc CC units were replaced with better organized independent battalions, such as Detached Battalion 4. This particular unit played a major role in the Battle of Ilomansi, severing the supply lines of the Soviet artillery and thus denying the Red Army artillery support. Among the Finns to fight in this battle was the famous Lori Torni, who ended the war having fought for Finland, Germany, and the United States. This man killed so many Soviets in the Battle of Ilomansi that they placed a 3 million Finnish mark bounty on his head. We've mentioned the Gumias in a previous video, but we could never shine enough light on these devastating Moroccan warriors. While Finland's CC units were thrown together in response to the Soviet invasion, Moroccan Gumiers had been fighting as tribal irregulars under the French army since the early 1900s. During World War II, some 12,000 Gumiers fought for the Free French and their allies. These warriors, named after the curved daggers they carried into battle, were masters of night raiding operations and rough terrain. No one could traverse mountains as well as the Gumiers. They fought against the Axis powers in North Africa, Italy, France, and Germany, sustaining more than 8,000 casualties throughout the war. Putting the Gumiers' reported war crimes aside for the time being, their performance in the Italian campaign was legendary, especially during Operation Diadem and the Battle of Monte Cassino. US Lieutenant General Mark W. Clark had this to say about the Moroccans after they penetrated the Arunchi Mountains to outflank the Germans in May 1944. In spite of the stiffening enemy resistance, 
The 2nd Moroccan Infantry Division penetrated the Gustave Line in less than two days of fighting. The next 48 hours on the French front were decisive. The knife-wielding Gumiers swarmed over the hills, particularly at night, and General Juin's entire force showed an aggressiveness hour after hour that the Germans could not withstand. After the war, the Gumiers fought for the French in Indochina from 1949 to 1954. With Moroccan independence, they ceased serving the French and joined the Royal Moroccan Armed Forces. Now, we've already published a full video on the Gurkhas, but we simply cannot make this video without paying these indomitable Nepalese warriors the respect they deserve. After all, as Indian Field Marshal Sam Manikshaw put it, if a man says he is not afraid of dying, he's either lying or he's a Gurkha. Some 250,000 Kukri-wielding Gurkhas served in the British Indian Army during the Second World War. While not strictly special forces, these warriors fought with unmatched ferocity in many of the war's theatres, most notably in North Africa, Italy, Malaya, Burma, and India. All in all, the Gurkhas were granted over 2,700 awards for bravery in World War II, including the Victoria Cross, multiple times. In the mountains of Italy on the 10th of November 1944, for example, a Gurkha named Thamungurung earned a posthumous Victoria Cross for rushing a German machine gun nest that was about to make mincemeat of his section. The Germans in the nest surrendered to Thamung, and then he proceeded to run along the mountain like a madman, firing on the Germans until he'd spent his Tommy gun. Snatching up a nearby Bren gun, he stood in full view of the remaining German forces and sprayed and prayed until he'd emptied two magazines. Thamung was ultimately gunned down, but his bravery in this engagement allowed his fellow Gurkhas to withdraw to safety, regroup, and capture the German position a few days later. In the 1944 Battle of Imphal, another Gurkha further cemented the Gurkha's reputation. This was Agan Singh Rai, the acting Nike of the 5th Gurkha Rifles. Fighting at a position called Mortar Bluff, he charged a Japanese machine gun position under a hail of bullets to take the heat off his men. Entering the Japanese bunker, Agan Singh Rai personally cut down three of the four men manning the position. Throughout the day, the Nike spearheaded another two charges. In both, he cleared the Japanese positions almost entirely alone, bursting into the third Japanese bunker with the Tommy gun in one hand and a grenade in the other. According to his VC citation, the enemy, demoralized by Agan Singh Rai's complete contempt for danger, fled before the onslaught. Of course, those were just two anecdotes about Gurkhas who served in the Second World War, among many. In 1901, the US Army formed the Philippine Scouts. This military organization was largely composed of Filipinos and Filipino Americans and commanded by American officers. On the 7th of December 1941, the same day as Pearl Harbor, the Japanese began their invasion of the Philippines and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the army. It did not go well for the defenders. By March 1942, the Japanese had overrun most of the Philippines. A defending force composed primarily of scouts was still holding out in Bataan, but the Japanese had established a naval blockade and supplies were wearing thin. Still, the scouts fought bravely. Back in January, for instance, Jose Calogus of the Scouts 88th Field Artillery Regiment earned a Medal of Honor for one particular daring action. Busy working as a mess sergeant, Calogus noticed that enemy artillery had obliterated the crew of a nearby 75mm M1917 artillery piece. Understanding the importance of the gun, Calogus made a 900 meter or 1000 yard sprint across a shell swept battlefield to man the M1917 with a squad of volunteers. For the rest of the afternoon, Kalagus rained hell on the Japanese, allowing his fellow scouts to dig in and make a stand against the Japanese onslaught. Kalagus was among the scouts captured by the Japanese on the Batan Peninsula in April. Those scouts who managed to avoid capture or escape joined the Philippine resistance. If you're looking to take a deep dive into the Philippine resistance, We've got a great pair of videos on the subject. One is an overview, while the other explores the complicated logistics 
of the resistance and how it collaborated with the allies outside of the Philippines. For now, we turn to Juan Pajota, who epitomized the scout experience during World War II. After the mass surrender on the Batan Peninsula, Juan fell in with the famous US Major Robert Lapham, who was also a scout, and founded a guerrilla unit on the Luzon Central Plains. Juan went on to participate in the raid at Cabanatuan in January 1945. Working with the US Rangers and Alamo scouts, Juan and his guerrillas decimated the Japanese 359th Independent Infantry Battalion and liberated more than 500 Allied POWs from the barbaric Japanese camp. Juan's knowledge of the terrain and enemy activity made him an invaluable asset in this operation, which likely would have failed without him. According to Lapham, Juan was a very unflamboyant guy with a natural bent for leadership. He was resourceful, organized, and extremely imaginative. After the Americans returned to the Philippines and converged with the resistance to liberate the islands in 1944, many of the scouts turned guerrillas rejoined the US Army and several new scout units were established. These new scouts fought to extricate the Japanese from North Luzon and, after Japan capitulated, served as part of the Allied occupation forces on the Japanese home islands. How the tables had turned. Massive thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring the video. To experience epic World War II PvP battles in planes, tanks, ships, and much more, be sure to head to the link in my description and take advantage of the huge free bonus pack War Thunder is offering, including multiple premium vehicles, premium account features, boosters, and much more.